If Clerks is about a guy who doesn't like his job, then Mallrats is about consumers that lounge. Mallrats is Kevin Smith's sophomore effort after the surprise hit that is Clerks. Upon release, it was pounded by critics. It was given so many negative reviews that Kevin Smith apologized for the creation of Mallrats. Do I hold the same thoughts as critics? Being someone on the internet with an opinion, you can find out now. The story of Mallrats revolves around our two main characters, Brody and T.S., whose girlfriends recently broke up with them. They head off to the mall to get their minds off of recent events. It's one of those movies. Ugh. I already have problems with the story. I wouldn't be watching this if it wasn't a Kevin Smith film. So bear with me. Your girlfriends broke up with you for a reason. The movie is trying to twist it as if their girlfriends are the bad guys. Not really, with good reasons like these. I can't believe that you're still going through with this. Come on, T.S., it's no big deal. I mean, it's not like I'm gonna sleep with you. You might as well. Oh. No, I thought you had more backbone than this. Why do you have to do everything that he tells you to do? There you go again. I mean, just as you're making headway, you louse it up with this, this possessive machismo which brings everything endearing about you to a screaming halt, T.S. Brody is a selfish asshole who gets angry over the dumbest things to the point where it's not even humorous. He's very controlling, and on top of that, he's like this the whole movie. That so-called character development at the end doesn't help. This is the main character? You want me to root for this guy? No thanks, I'd rather not. What is this monstrosity? Maybe it's for the Easter Bunny pictures. Impossible, the Easter Bunny court is down at the other end of the mall. It's been up since two days after Christmas. I want answers. Ask one of the workers. The thing is, they tried to make him a likable asshole like Randall from Clerks. There's a difference. Randall is likable and understandable while Brody is not. I just want to knock that stupid cup out of his hand. Want a sip of my soda? Oh! Uh. 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 You know who I am? For retail manager. T.S. on the other hand is a decent human being and a good friend as shown throughout. Sure, he's a bit selfish though, nowhere near as bad as Brody. There's really not much to say about Renee and Brandy except that Renee is a bitch. Understandable, still a bitch. I'm sure by now you're asking if there are any likable characters in this movie. Yes. Gwen Turner, Jay and Silent Bob, and a surprise cameo if you can say that much. Gwen Turner has a likability about her. She's got a likable personality and encourages her friends throughout the movie, aiding in any way she can. Then there's the return of the foul mouthed perv with all the catchphrases and the silent wise man. Jay and Silent Bob are the most entertaining characters, even if their hijinks are cartoony. The antagonists Shannon and LaFours, well, there's not much to say about them other than that they antagonize our characters. Knock it off! I don't like a majority of the humor. 70% of the humor is mean-spirited, 25% is lazy toilet humor, and only 5% is clever humor. I know that when it comes to comedy, there's always supposed to be a victim. That's what the punchline is. But the thing is, whenever you have a victim, aka a punchline in a comedy, you're supposed to laugh. Whenever there was a punchline in Mall Rats, a majority of the time I either shrugged or I said, that's not funny, that's a dick move. Doesn't mean that there isn't any good dialogue, I just don't like how a majority of these characters are written. I'll be going back to Brody briefly. Take this scene. Who the fuck is the man? He doesn't know who the what, man what, is. Tell me? The man in the world of One comics? Side, Red. Hey, what the hell's going on here? I was warned about you. Take it easy before I have you removed. You gotta ask me nicely. Fuck this. Why is he angry? It's writing in scenes like this that I don't care for a majority of the characters. The casting and performances, I'll give credit. Jason Lee, Ben Affleck, Jason Mewes, Kevin Smith, Jeremy London, Shannon Doherty, Renee Humphrey and Joey Loren Adams 
all had great performances. I was convinced these characters are not actors. Even if I didn't like a majority of them, still, good on you. The soundtrack is another positive. It's pretty good. Songs like Social, Mall Rats, Hated It, Build Me Up Buttercup, Bubbles, and Broken. Great songs that fit the movie's style. I didn't really care that Brody and T.S. broke up with their girlfriends. I was more interested in what Jay and Silent Bob were up to. In fact, I didn't really start enjoying the movie until they showed up. I wasn't a fan of the humor as it killed what potential was left after I found out what the initial premise is. It just isn't funny. To me, anyway. Are critics right? Are Roger Ebert and Gene Siskel right about this movie? Well, there are good aspects about this film, and there are bad aspects that outweigh the good. I agree with some things they said. I have my valid reasons, as I didn't nitpick. I found legitimate flaws within it. And I didn't like the movie overall. I did like the soundtrack. Should Kevin Smith apologize for this movie? Hell no, there are worse movies than Mall Rats. I'll give credit to Kevin for taking the blame, even though it wasn't a movie that was so bad it should be shunned. No one should apologize for making a movie except Michael Bay. I believe he needs to own up to making those piece of shit movies he's made and put forth effort. Mall Rats had effort put in it, just not enough for me to like it. On that note, I will say that Mallrats is a definite skip. Well, that completes part two of my View Askew retrospective. Join me next week as I'll be reviewing Chasing Amy. I'm Lena Mars of the MMCA Productions crew. I'll see you guys next time.